best moments in seven years of traveling. That's a freaking hard task. But I've tried my best to share with you my seven best moments of seven years of traveling. And if you stay till the end, I'm sharing my most exciting, most beautiful experience that I had traveling and which is like so freaking mind blowing. And I hope everyone in this world gets a chance to see and explore and do that thing as well. So make sure you stay till the end and you find out what it is. Hi love bug, I'm Vivi. Welcome to Adventure Your World. My channel is all about guiding you to a more adventurous life that you're truly and fully in love with. So let's get started with the seven best moments of seven years of traveling. I'm so freaking excited. And the first thing, the first story that I want to share, there's an incredible thing that I've never would have imagined to be possible. And a few years back, I was traveling Southeast Asia with a friend and we got into a really bad bus accident. It was in the night, we don't know what happened. The bus totally crashed. I had to open my head really, really deep. It was really bad. I needed to go to a hospital and have stitches. And Laos is not really a place where <laughs> you wanna be in that kind of situation. But anyway, it was a local bus. It was just my very good friend Natalie and me and some other Mexican guy that we've just barely met on a scooter ride before and who's been like scootering around with us for a little bit with some other people. And it's so in the middle of the night, nothing has happened to him, you know, some like scratches, but nothing really serious. With very long hair and a guitar and we've never seen him again after that. Until about five years later, my roommates and me are planning to go to Pascua in Mexico to celebrate Dia de Muertos, which is a very, very traditional thing, and Pascua is supposedly one of the best places to be. And we still had one, two places in our Airbnb, so I put a post on Couchsurfing that if anyone wanted to join us and hang out with us, we're a big group, um, come and have fun with us and like, you know, explore and experience Mexican culture. And this guy shows up and we start talking and he's like, have you been to Lao? And I'm like, yeah, but it's been a few years. You've been in a bus accident, right? And I just stared at him and I'm like, are you serious? How do you know? It's like, this is not you. <laughs> this is not you. And he just looks at me I'm like, yeah, this is me. Like we've been in the same ac bus accident and we re-met in the weirdest way after so many years, he looked completely different. Short hair, very nice, very kind, very gentle person, very, very loving human being. And the funny thing about it was, back then, I thought I was gonna die. I mean, obviously I'm exaggerating, but when you have your hair, head cut open and you have blood everywhere, and I'm not really good with blood and all these things, I literally thought I was gonna die re-meeting this guy on day of the death in Mexico, I felt like that was a joke. <laughs> but it was such a beautiful synchronicity of events happening and like the story closing that just like, how is that happening? How is that even possible? It was just the most beautiful thing. Another very beautiful moment was having my Spanish family come over to Mexico and uh, travel with me and I've been like trying to find out the coolest places because they were coming with the kids and we're like trying to find the most Instagrammable, most beautiful, most adventurous places and we found this place um, with the red water and you know red water is kind of a cool thing and there are actually two places in uh, southern Mexico and apart from the lagoon there's this place where the water the red water flows into the ocean and it looks so beautiful with like the red water and the normal ocean water like getting mixed up and flowing into each other and it's just the most beautiful thing so we stopped there started walking towards it we actually discovered it by accident because we we're like trying to find a cool place to to stop and enjoy some more time there and we went into the water and you're walking through the very cold ocean water until you get to the water where it's starting to get red and it starts to become burning hot 
and it was just this incredible moment of feeling the cold and in the next second the very hot water and how they are not mixing or like mingling and like you know getting confused and every kind of water is staying by itself in itself it was just incredibly amazing like mind-blowing experience which we all really really loved and this whole journey with them was just incredible next story happened during my first time visiting india um, i was still very very young um, and i came with my parents and we had a driver and he's going with us all the places and we're going to the taj mahal which i've been so excited to see like the taj mahal for me has always been like <laughs> I don't even have words like the most incredible and most exciting thing and I was so excited to go see it and after visiting the Taj Mahal which like fulfilled my heart like such a beautiful place after visiting the Taj Mahal we're going to a very local place he tells us to come and they have all these like little Taj Mahals and as he knew how much I love the Taj Mahal and how excited I was and he was so excited that someone was so excited about his culture and his country and really getting to know the place and not by judging the people or by getting really annoyed. He gifted me this little Taj Mahal that you, I think you can put like a light bulb in and then like it lights up and stuff like the most beautiful thing and my dad was like why don't you let him sign it so it has more value to you and you'll always remember that it is from him so i asked him if he can sign it or just put his name on it and at first he was like no no it's okay it's okay it's for you it's for you like just take it and we kind of tried on assisting because i was so thankful and i really really loved the present until we found out that he doesn't know how to write. This man, who is about 40 years old, didn't even know how to write his own name. And fortunately, this is a reality for a lot of people, in, not only in India, but around the world. And it kind of broke my heart that I, we tried insisting it on him, and it obviously made him feel uncomfortable. And he had someone else write his name on the little Taj Mahal that he gifted me. And I remember his name is Sundar Paul, and I'm for sure pronouncing it the wrong way. But the kindness of this man and his beautiful heart, like I'm never gonna forget his like energy of who he's being and how gentle and how amazing he was. Even though he didn't know how to read and write, even though he didn't know a lot of things about the world, just seeing a person being such a wonderful human being despite their circumstances, despite having the possibility of learning all the things and doing all the things that are very, very normal for us, it's just really mind-blowing to me. My next very beautiful moment was traveling through the southern parts of Africa. I did this road trip, um, solo backpacking by myself from Tanzania to Swaziland, through Zambia, Zan uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa, all the way into Swaziland where I was gonna meet my friend. And I've been on a lot of safaris, guided and self-driving, and it's always been amazing. But my favorite animal ever are leopards and I love leopards not really leopard print that you put on but the actual animal leopard I think it's so beautiful like it has so much beauty so much elegance so much strength so much like I don't give a shit what anyone else is doing I'm just doing what I want and I'm just who I am and I just think they're so majestic and so beautiful that I always wanted to see one in person and they're very hard to find and unfortunately it's one of the only animals I've been missing and I told my friend a local from Zimbabwe and he was like you know what in my hometown they have this like animal encounter shelter whatever um, I'll just bring you there and I was like what that'd be incredible I mean it's not the same as seeing them 
in nature and in their natural habitat but he took me from Wick Falls um, where Victoria Falls are the city to his hometown Bulawayo I think it's called um, in South from Zimbabwe and we went to this place and there were so many leopards and they were so beautiful and we spent so much time there and after a while I started feeling sorry for him because I just didn't want to leave I just been so in like oh my god this is so beautiful and for him to be so considerate and to really think a step further and bring me there and really like fulfill me one of my biggest dreams actually or it's just very mind-blowing I really appreciated him next really cool experience was on a very early morning flight out of Santarém um, a small city or town and in northern Brazil and it was still dark outside and there were these like group of like kind of chubby people everyone kind of knew these people everyone was like looking at them a lot of people came up to them and asked them for pictures even the flight attendants and the stewards asked them for pictures and I was like who are these people like no idea I was just like trying to observe the situation and as we were walking to the plane it was a very small plane um, the guy comes up kind of behind me and my dad goes like go take a picture of him I'm like I don't even know who this guy is and I'm like who cares? Just go get a picture of him. I'm like, cool, you know, let's go. I was like 18 at that time or 17, so I was like, cool, let's just, just do it. Um, so I come talk to him in English, like, hey, can I get a picture of you? And he's so excited, like, oh, where are you from? And like getting so excited about me wanting to take a picture of him, whereas before you could literally see that he was taking pictures, but he wasn't overly excited. It was like, 4 a.m. in the morning, you know, you're not really in the state of like, let's take pictures with everyone. And he takes pictures with me, and we go into the plane, I sit down, and about five minutes later, someone from his team comes up and has an autographed CD and DVD of their music, and turns out that they're Cesar Menotti and Fabiano, which are like one of the biggest country stars musicians in Brazil. I'm like, oh, holy cow, so cool. And we started listening to the music and it was like really, really cool music when you actually get your note and listen to it. And pretty much everyone in Brazil knows them. So that doesn't mean that just because we think we're not good enough or just because we think, oh, we can't have this, it's actually not true. People that we think are up there or are, you know, way ahead of us they're also just normal people and they just want to be treated in a really really nice well as well that doesn't mean that we cannot be friends with them or get to know them it just depends on how we talk to them and who we are when we're trying to get to know them my sixth best moment was when i was doing an exchange year in chile and my parents came visiting me I, and I knew they were coming, I had their flight details and they didn't know I was gonna go pick them up. I had a camper van rented so that person was gonna come and like deliver the car and I had no idea I was gonna come. We were supposed to meet a few days later but I had their flight information so I went early morning to the airport and I was just waiting there. I think I was waiting for five hours because the flight was delayed and they didn't have the right information. So I just like spent all the time there just in case they're coming early, which obviously does rarely happen. But I just wanted to be there and not miss a chance. And they're coming and in Chile, in the airport of Santiago, you have this ginormous glass wall where you can go up onto a second level and you can actually look down at the people that are coming and getting the luggage. And I'm like scanning people and suddenly I see my parents and I'm just getting so excited and so emotional at that time I hadn't seen them for like seven or eight months and it was the first time that I was actually such a long time away from them so I just started getting really really emotional and I started crying like the biggest tears ever like being so happy and being so excited I ran downstairs waiting for them they had no idea I was there i just been crying like crazy being so excited and so happy to see them the funny thing was that 
my dad was like, well, what are you doing here? How am I gonna handle the situation with you crying? My mom just came and like hugged me like crazy and like trying to handle me crying and like figuring out how to find the guy, where the guy was that was delivering the car. I think I've never cried so much in my whole life but I love my parents so much. They're such incredible people. I literally have to thank everything I have and everything I am to them because they started setting me up with the right mindset. They started pushing me out of my comfort zone and learning more and being more and becoming more every single day since I was a very, very, very small kid. And I think I'm for sure wouldn't be where I am now without them. Number seven, my coolest ever experience, which for sure wasn't planned, happened in a small island in Cambodia. I think it's called Karong, Sol Karong Solmon, Solmon Karong, something like that. Um, by the way, all places that you cannot pronounce probably make up for some really, really cool travel experiences and some really cool adventures. So I went there with two girls I met traveling Southeast Asia and it was one of the girls birthday so we we're gonna spend her birthday on this very small island with no electricity just pretty much beach in a beach hut just enjoying ourselves adventuring around a little bit just having a good time and as we're going to have birthday dinner with her we met some random people and they're like have you guys seen the the sparkling I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I have no idea what you mean. I'm like, no, we haven't. I don't think so. He's like, well, you should go to the water and start moving it. And I was like, what do you mean? And I thought it's just literally a weird person that is on drugs, which, you know, kind of happens sometimes in Asia. It's like, oh, what's wrong with you? Who are you, creep? And he's like, no, seriously, I, I'm not joking. Go down to the water. Go now that it's like freaking dark and start moving it and then see what happens. And we're like, yeah, sure, you know, like, Let's just give it a try. So we walked down to the water. We started moving it, started splashing the water, and it started sparkling in the most beautiful blue I've ever seen. And at that point, I have never ever heard of glowing plankton. It's called bio, I really can't pronounce it in English, Bioluminescence? I don't know. I can't pronounce it in, in Spanish, which is bioiluminescencia. That's a lot easier, but English like gets me every time. Anyway, if you want to Google it, I'm trying to put some pictures up here as well so you can actually see how incredible it is, but no picture will ever make up for the actual experience. And we just been there, started like splashing around the plankton, and you could see like the small particles that looked like glitter splashing around and like walking through the sand you could actually see your footprints in the sand going like melting away in a sparkle and sitting in the water having like moving the water and having your arm like go up and down the water you could actually see like these little sparkles and how they so slowly dissolved and like disappeared and it was the most incredible thing especially because i've had traveled a lot but for some reason, I've never heard of it. And this shows us how much is out there that we don't even know that we don't know. Like there's so many places, so many things, so many experiences, so many incredible opportunities out there that we don't even know they exist. And my friend had some snorkeling glasses and we started snorkeling around. It was just incredible experience being in the pitch black water swimming and seeing your hands and seeing everything you move and just like you can't even describe it in words and if you're trying to have this experience as well there's a few places around the world you can just google it it is important that you check that there's no like light pollution around so like full moon isn't really good um if there's a big city or hotel or whatever around that's not really good either so this place was perfect because it was out in the ocean, there was no electricity on the island, so it was literally pitch black. No moon, just the stars, and it's just made for the most mind-blowing experience I've ever had. 
and I've actually seen it two more times, both in Mexico, once in a lagoon close to Puerto Escondido and the other time in a small island called Holbox, which is Holbox, 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 whatever, um, close to, kind of close to Cancun. Um, it's both, all the times it's been incredible, but it's never been as stunning and mind-blowing as it was in that small island in Cambodia just because the circumstances and the light was different but definitely go see it it's like an out of this world experience and so beautiful so definitely go see and experience it for yourself it's an out of this world experience and if you want to start creating a more adventurous life i have a free training for you below and i've named it how to live a life you will remember literally it has a lot of really really cool and important information how to up level your experience in life and live life on a deeper level so make sure you check that out as well Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, consider subscribing and share this video with anyone who you think would benefit from it. And there's actually a whole series of seven things during seven years of traveling that you might be interested in checking out as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. I love you. Bye.